on Twitch and see if we have sound on Twitch, because sometimes we don't, and I have to figure out why. And if the stream doesn't start, I'm going to have to restart the screen or the refresh the browser window. Yeah, I guess looks like I'm going to have to do that, because sometimes you have to do that too. And we have sound. All right. And uh, Dementia Radio now and recording in three, two, one. Recorded live on DementiaRadio.org, it's the Funny Music Podcast, brought to you by TheFunk.com, where you can download new free comedy songs twice a week. Now, here's your hosts, Devo Spice and the great Luke Ski. Hey, Devo Spice. Hey, Luke Ski. We have Burble's Belly on the show. Hey, Eric. Hi, buddy. Nice to see you. Welcome back. Uh, Paul Wensley was supposed to join us. Uh, I just got an email from him saying he got called into work, so unfortunately he will not be able to join us, but that's okay. Welcome to episode 745 of the Funny Music Podcast for September 26, 2024. The title of this week's episode, which I almost texted to my wife instead of putting in the chat, is Jobless Elite. Where the hell is the chat window? There it is. Let's move <laughs> that over there. And there's the chat. All right. And then move that. Now, if it's one of these floating windows, it's always in my way, no matter where I put it. All right. So, uh, as Luke said, we have Eric Arnold on the show from Burble's Belly. Welcome, Eric. Thank you very much. Good to see you again. And, uh, yeah, we're doing the show. Let's do the catch-up thing. Let's get caught up with what Devo and Luke have been up to since last week. Or else Devo, if Luke failed and didn't show up. Hey, what? No, oh, he's right. Point. So, Luke, what you been up to? Well, I, um, uh, uh, took a, take a look at my calendar to remind myself what I've been up to. Um, somebody trying to message me just now? Oh. Okay, well, I'll have to listen to that later because I'm talking to you right now. Um, <laughs> I was—I figured it was you getting my text about the Fumpcast, <laughs> just like oh, just okay. now getting it. <laughs> well, um, I saw Transformers One, and holy crap, it is so good! Um, it, it's like, you know, uh, you, you all know my devotion to the 1986 Transformers, you know, animated feature film. Uh, and it's, but it's like if I kind of take the nostalgia factor away and try to judge that film, you know, like on its own versus you know what this new movie is. Like this movie is this new movie is objectively better. Um, you know, so, if you weren't talking about this this movie over the past week or so, I wouldn't have known it existed. Like I have seen zero ads or banners or anything for it, which is surprising considering that uh you know uh it has a voice cast with <coughs> excuse me uh chris hemsworth um scarlett johansson uh, uh keegan michael key and <coughs> brian tyrese henry i think that's his name <coughs> and you know it's not to mention steve buscemi as starscream Ooh, um, <laughs> nice so like talk about excellent casting but um yeah, so those of you who hasn't heard about it, it's basically kind of a, a, a like they're basically going back to the very beginnings of you know where the Transformers you know kind of started and came from on you know the early years of Cybertron and seeing they, they've kind of you know are kind of they're basing it on some past material, but then they're also kind of changing some things and making it their own story and doing their own thing, which I'm fine with. Like this whole thing with you know. Optimus Prime and Megatron, who were formerly known as Orion Pax and uh, D16, um, like, you know, like them being like buddies and friends and stuff like that. Like, as far as I can, you know, like based on like the original cartoon, that's not how things went down. But, you know, whatever. It's 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 an interesting take on it. Plus the fact that the character Alita One is finally getting used in something excellently. And oh, my God, Scarlett Johansson is so hilarious like when she's just like berating Orion Pax and the other people for being like 
incompetent and everything. It's oh, it's so good. Anyway, I don't want to like give away too much about it if you want to see it. But I, I don't think I know who but, Alita One is as a character. Well, Alita One is basically the, they did they did one episode before the movie came out. That is, they did one episode uh, where we find out that like hiding out on Cybertron, there is a whole bunch. There are a whole bunch of female Transformers, and like Alita One is their leader. And um, there's like you know there's Chromia there's like a couple of others I'm I'm forgetting their names but um, but basically it's like like Shockwave discovers them like catches them sneaking into the Decepticon headquarters on Cybertron to steal something and like they're all like female Autobots I thought they were extinct you know so <laughs> you know so why do like... robots have a gender well <laughs> they're yeah <robots>. really <laughs> yeah. yeah. Anyway, and and, it, and it's and it, and it just kind of like bugged me because you know like like GI Joe like they didn't have a lot of female characters but they had some you know it's like why would you think that people I mean it's that whole thing about like oh boys aren't going to want to buy well, the yeah but that that girl, was so the not... that was the thing back in the eighties there was you know yeah. the guy who could do this 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 and the girl. Like, that was her character trait, yeah. was she was the girl. You had all of these Smurfs, and then you had Smurfette. The, on Super Friends, you had all yeah. the superheroes, and then you had Wonder Woman. You know, it, it, it was like that on everything. Well, I don't know, like, the, to, to be fair, Wonder Woman could do things. So. Yes, that's true, <laughs> but, yes. <laughs> but 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 still, I, I know, exa- like, you know, like, like, you know, He-Man's, it's like, you know, He-Man's yeah, most He-Man. Man. Man they have Arms, all of these Man, creatures Man, and, and, and Tila. Man-at-Arms is a tech person and, you know, <laughs> Ram Man, you know, slams into things and Stratos can fly and blah, blah, blah. And then, like, Tila is just, you know, girl. So, yeah, uh, there was there was Tila yeah. on the, for the good guys, there was Evelyn for the bad guys, and then there was the Sorceress. So they had three yeah. female characters all based on the same doll model. So, <laughs> Well, I don't think Sorceress was based on the same doll model. Was but she? Evelyn and Tila did. No, no, Sorceress was had her own model. Okay, uh, I don't Tila, think I ever had the sorceress. But, I have Evelyn and Tila over there. Yeah, Evelyn and Tila were the were the same doll. Yeah. you know, mold back then. But um, but at least and at least Evelyn had like magic powers, so at least she had something to do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. Anyway, and and they've with all of the newer iterations of He Man that have come out, uh, Tila's become a much better character. Yeah. So, because they all kind of realize like, oh snap, we need to like do a better job. Um. But anyway, so yeah, Transformers One was awesome. I thoroughly enjoyed it, and I highly recommend it, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, lots of laughs, lots of laughs, and stuff. Uh, what else? I did a caricature gig on Saturday on Santa Monica Beach, and um, uh, I got it through a, a person I know in the animation industry. And because these caricatures were going to be in color, uh, uh, he was charging the the company uh, who were who were hiring us uh, two hundred and twenty five dollars an hour to do them. Uh, and he had five artists there all drawing at the same time. And it was a three-hour gig. So I basically earned $675 to, you know, hang out there for three hours and draw. But this company, which is like some kind of bank or something, like, you know, it's Santa Monica Beach. So there's people playing volleyball, volleyball. There's people getting food. There's people doing all this kind of stuff. So it's like there were lots of times during that thing where, like, of the five artists, like, two of them would be drawing. And the rest of us would just be kind of sitting there not doing much. So... I basically got paid six hundred and seventy-five dollars to draw a total of nine people. Wow, three that's that's a pretty good ratio. So, and on top of that, the people running the event tipped us each a hundred dollars in cash. Nice. So, so yeah. So I'm certainly hoping he gets me more gigs uh, like that. Um, last night, uh, f- uh, for the first time in quite a long time, I had a few friends over, mainly because uh, Santana's in town and she <laughs> she will be leaving town again. In like two weeks, so uh, because her life is all about the back and forth right now. Um, but she wanted to hang out with some friends that she hadn't seen in a while, so we just kind of had a, a small get together at my place. I invited uh, Tony and Kit over, and uh, we did, <laughs> we played a uh, boo tree, and uh, that's the the drawing uh, telephone type game, and. Uh, <laughs> it was like Santana kept saying before the party, like, I really want to play that game. I want to play that game because she had played it once before. But when she played it once before, the, the last time, she was either drunk or high and like couldn't, like didn't really understand how it worked, but she knew that she was having fun. <laughs> so this time, so this time we played two rounds of it with seven people. And at some point during the first round between Santana and Mariah, like something got messed up and Tony was getting like, 
so aggravated. <laughs> and I was just trying to tell him, like, like you know, I was just like trying to psychically say, like, like, dude, chill. She wanted to play this game. She wants to learn it and figure out how to do it right. So by the time we got to the second round, she kind of it, like it clicked for her. She figured out like, oh, this is how this game works or whatever. So, but yeah, we had a lot of fun. Uh, one of my favorite moments from that was Tony. Tony was you know feeding his uh, thing to me. Like he wrote the line that I would have to draw to start off with. So he quoted uh, Fred Flintstone from that clip from the Weird Al show where. It, where Fred opens the door and Weird Al is there, like, you know, and it's like, Al Yankstone, I haven't seen you in blah, 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 blah. So that was the, the, the prompt he gave me. So I drew this. <laughs> and later on, I checked the video. Like, today I checked the video because I wanted to see how accurate I was. That's pretty darn accurate. <laughs> That's awesome. what that shot was. Like, the Hawaiian toga thing went all the way down to the the bottom and, and not was, wasn't just a shirt. Like, that's the biggest mistake in this entire thing. <laughs> <laughs> and oh, and arms uh, and and Fred Flintstone's other arm was uh, not in that position. It, it it wasn't up against his hip. It was somewhere else. So, but yeah, I pretty much nailed that one. Um, yeah, and anything else here would really. Oh, here I want to show you. I want to show you one, and I want to see if you can guess what the phrase was that inspired this. Okay, here it is, right here. I'll keep talking so that it keeps staying on screen. Can can you guess what I was trying to do with this particular? Drawing Devo Spice or Eric. Um, I'm going to guess it's uh, that Queen song about the riding a bicycle. I can't remember the name of it. I guess it's just called Bicycle. But like, I want to ride my bicycle or something. N nope, but you're in the same general wheelhouse-ish of what it is. <laughs> Eric, do you have any guesses? Uh, wow. Um, let's see. If I would have had the time to color in the jacket black and, and the pants black to denote that he's wearing leather, that might have helped a little bit. <laughs> but what it is is uh, Meatloaf's, I, I would do anything for love, but I won't do that. <laughs> so okay. That was my quick drawing to try to represent that. And I, ran, and I didn't want to make everyone wait longer by coloring in the jacket black. What does a bicycle have to do with that? He, motorcycle, but out of hell, he rides a, oh, a oh, motorcycle. Oh, oh, I, I, I didn't see. I didn't see that as a motorcycle. Yeah. I just saw it as a as a bicycle. Gotcha. Yeah, it was okay. a very quick, very small drawing of you know. I I should have put more lines on it to indicate that it was a motorcycle and not a bike, <laughs> not a regular bike. But uh, yeah, other than that, I um oh, I got the first initial kind of mix and messing around and and seeing what he can do with it uh, from Brant, aka Professor Shy Guy. Uh, for my new song, and holy crap, it sounds so amazing. I am so psyched for my new song. Uh, my friend Zach is working on editing a video for it uh, using uh, video clips, and oh, it's um, I'm psyched. So, uh, and also, just before we started here today, uh, I, ept I whipped together a, 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 a piece of video which will be shown uh, during the Logan Awards. That's, uh, that's quite important, so uh, I, I sent the link to you and Ian just now and uh yeah so i'm very happy to have gotten that done because starting tomorrow i'm working every day up until the day i leave for fump fest so i have a, a to-do list and i want to make sure that i've i'm getting all the things done I, and uh is ian showing up after the meet after this for our weekly meeting or i hope so because this will be the meeting? last meeting before fump fest yeah yeah we kind of need to finalize what songs we're doing uh for sure in the uh in the escape from the lab show yeah <laughs> so um yeah but that was about it uh, what have you been up to uh well uh you may remember we i went to the beach last weekend because i did the show from the beach last weekend uh that was a lot of fun it was our 23rd uh anniversary on sunday um, and we actually got married at my parents' beach house back in 2001. We got married like right on the shore at high tide. It was it was great. It was like an hour after fall officially began. It, it was it was awesome. Um, so I we went up there without the kids. It's like all three kids were here, and I think this is the first time we we've ever left the kids for any length of time, like like overnight. Yeah. Like I'm I'm I, we had we've gone out and, and back and stuff for, you know, in a couple hours or whatever. But I think this is the first time we've ever gone overnight and left the kids home. Now they're 
20, 18, and 16. So it's, you know, it's not like we left an eight-year-old home by himself. But um, still, it was weird traveling without the kids in tow, you know. Um, but it was fun. I, I, I still had to work on Fump Fest and the Fump and stuff. And, uh, you know, but at least I got to do it from the beach. So that was fun. Um, I've been working on Fump Fest. I am right now, right as we speak, my printer is over there cranking these things out. This is the program book for Fump Fest 2024. Last year, I printed these at the hotel, like the morning, <laughs> bef- like the like Thursday night or or something. Um, it's because I like I brought literally I brought my printer with me. I brought my my big industrial stapler with me. And printed them at the hotel. So I am ahead of schedule this year. Well, not ahead of schedule, but I am much in much better shape than I was at this time last year. So I'm I'm actually not panicking about what I have left to do. There's still a lot I have left to do, but it's all doable before Wednesday. So I'm not panicking yeah. yet. Um, my, my, my more recent example of something like that was uh, when, you know, Artie Barnes passed away the week before MarsCon was happening, and then uh, suddenly this idea that was... Uh, it, may, it, it may have been Stephanie uh, or some combination of, you know, people saying, like, you know, we really need to end the comedy music smackdown with fish heads. It was, you know, it was probably Stephanie saying, well, you just need to get some garbage bags and get some, uh, you know, some of those mask things, and I'm like... Okay, let me see what I can figure it out. So I, I, you know, garbage bags, of course, you can get anywhere. But, like, I had to find something comparable to those visor things they all wore. And then looking at the way they do them, they had, like, these, like, either painted or or put on, like, eyes, like, or, like, on top of it, you know, to make it look, you know, super weird. So, like, over the course of, of, of that weekend, I was, like, you know... Tr- trying to find time to ha- find paper, like draw eyes, <laughs> like I'm going to draw, you know, uh, whatever, like 20 sets of eyes. Then I got to cut them all out by hand. So that's 40 eyes cut out by hand and then get tape and tape them all individually to the masky things. Not to mention that oh, like during one of the nighttime things when everyone went to bed, I had to like stay up and get out the garbage bags and like open them all like pfft, get them all open and then cut off the armholes and the head holes and all of them so like and then so basically like during the smackdown i was backstage still cutting out the eyes and taping them to the, to the little masks just so that everyone would have one when we went up there and did the thing and it was worth it damn it it totally was that was that was amazing yeah. that was really good so the the other thing that happened is i uh, apparently have a job now um, they were, I was supposed Woo! to start on Monday, but I told them I was going to be out, you know, Wednesday through the following Monday. And they were like, why don't you just start Tuesday after you get back? And I was like, thank you, <laughs> because that gives me, you know, because otherwise I lost Monday and Tuesday for prep time, you know, the two days before mm-hmm. Fump Fest. So, um, so I am no longer part of the jobless elite. <laughs> And I swear I did not do that on purpose. That was the, the random words that came up on my random page. Um, so yeah, it'll be nice to have income again. That'll be good. I can buy things that you know uh, that cost money because you know that's how commerce works. Um, so yay! So I, I'm at, I'm like. I've been unemployed for so long that like I don't believe it's real. You know, like I'm I'm <laughs> I'm waiting for them to email me and go, "Oh, unfortunately that big project we need you for it fell through, so it turns out we don't need you. Sorry, dude." Like I'm totally waiting for that email and it hasn't come yet, but you know, <laughs> there's still time. There's still got a week and a half before I start, so but uh yeah. So Eric, what have you been up to? Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, not a whole lot. I have been part of the jobless elite for a couple of years. I uh, retired a few years ago. So um, just uh, hanging out here on Whidbey Island in Washington State and writing some songs. And uh, uh, doing So you said, the, you said the phrase. I had to do it. <laughs> Yeah, well, I when when you when you told me that when you when you mentioned the phrase, I thought, oh, 
I've got this because if Paul can't be here because he's got to work and I'm retired, that makes me part of the jobless elite. So I thought, ah, perfect. You keep saying it, I'm just going to keep doing it. Yeah. Now, one of the things I have been doing is I've been going back and, and listening to some more stuff from the Fump and trying to get some inspiration and stuff. And I did want to, um, I have a little bone to pick with you, Tom, about your song Lawyer Up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Which I like a lot. I, I have to, I, I agree completely with the sentiment and the litigious nature of everything. But I got to say, one of my very favorite movies in the whole world is Smokey and the Bandit. And, uh, <laughs> okay. And it, <laughs> so, a l- little bit of a backstory, and I don't know if I mentioned this on the episode where we talked about that. Um, I was. Luke was not my first choice for second vocalist on that song, and that's not not a dig against Luke in any way, shape, or form. It was just, I want to try to expand the people that I'm working with. But I couldn't think of another rapper who does comedy or who has a sense of humor, who is at my level, roughly, who'd be willing to do the song with me. And I was like, ah, screw it. I, I know Luke can do a good job with it. I'll just have him do it. So... The original line for that song was the in-flight movie starred Adam Sandler. And I didn't <laughs> I didn't want to force Luke to say a, a, a to diss Adam Sandler because he is an Adam Sandler fan. I am not so much. I don't hate the guy or anything, but like like I like some of his stuff, but for the most part, yeah. But I I didn't want to force Luke to say that. So at the last minute, I changed it to something else that rhymed. And the first thing that came to mind was Smokey and the Bandit. I actually like the film Smokey and the Bandit. (laughs) Okay, well, again, it's a very funny song. And I I heard that line. It made me chuckle, partly because it's a funny line, but also because I thought, nah, you can't get sued over uh, showing uh, Smokey and the Bandit. That's a classic (laughs) there. I think I might have seen that movie within the last three, four months, just randomly oh, wow. see it a couple times a year. It comes on TV, I'll stop her. Mm. Anyway, I might even own it. I don't know. I might own a copy of it, an old DVD or something. Which was and the one where they were driving to... through the roller coaster and they ended up destroying it. Was that like part two or part three? Or was that the first one? Gosh. That wasn't the first one, no. Um, it might have been. I, I, I've, I've seen both two and three, but not nearly as much as one. So well, it wasn't one, but I'm not sure what it is. Okay. It, sound, it sort of sounds like maybe three. Yeah, three, I'm three. thinking it was part three because I remember I was so upset that they destroyed that roller coaster because I am a huge roller coaster fan. And when I found out they actually destroyed the roller coaster for the movie, I was really upset. <laughs> My guess is three. That was kind of the zaniest, wackiest, yeah. broadest kind of humor stuff. Uh, and I think that was Dom DeLuise in that one. It was funny too, but I'm uh, see, I'm, I'm a- much. I'm much more from. I don't. I know I've seen Smokey and the Bandit films at some point in my life, but I was much more about uh, Cannonball Run one and yes. two. Yeah, Cannonball uh, Run were great too. I've uh, it's been. Yeah, I've seen those too, but it's been a long, long time. Who were the stars in Cannonball Run? Well, they they also had Burt Reynolds and Dom Burt DeLuise. Reynolds. Yeah, Dom DeLuise. Oh. Um, but it was but it was like a big ensemble cast. Jamie Farr was in it. Oh, freaking Martin, James Bond, Sammy David um, Jr. James uh, uh, Roger Moore. Roger Moore. Yes. <laughs> He's driving. Around, I'm James Bond. <laughs> and here's the weird, weird bit of trivia. There actually is a third Cannonball Run movie, but the title of it is Speed Zone. <laughs> oh, I didn't yeah, know that. It's, yeah, it's and John Candy's in it, and uh, I think the Smothers Brothers are in it. Like the only original cast member from the Cannonball Run movies that was in it, I think, was Jamie Farr playing his like Arab chic character. Or whatever, <laughs> and it, but they just—I guess they figured that like, you know, they would get more people at the box office if they just gave the movie a completely different title because that that Cannonball Run might have seemed too cheesy or and outdated by the time that movie came out or something. But yeah, it. <laughs> John Candy, <laughs> Joe Flaherty, Jamie Farr, Brooke Shields, Eugene Levy, Donna Dixon, Tim Matheson, Peter Boyle. Wow. Good cast. Wow, it's a great cast. I just read that Peter Boyle's best man at his wedding was John Lennon. Wow. Really? Interesting. <laughs> yeah, were, Peter Boyle was kind of like a New York hippie kind of guy and when John Lennon was there in the 70s. Anyway, they'd be, they'd be, and I think maybe it was his wife who 
became friends with Yoko, and then they all got together. But anyway, yeah, Peter Boyle was, uh, John Lennon was Peter Boyle's best man. I thought nice. that was kind of interesting. That's cool. Anyway, I like the actor a lot. Young Frankenstein's one of my very favorite movies. Yeah, movie. yeah, Young Frankenstein yeah. is amazing. It's a fantastic movie. And it took um, me it took me until I was watching Everybody Loves Raymond for the longest time when it was on. And then went back and watched Young Frankenstein to recognize him, and I was like, "Oh, <laughs> yeah. oh, wow, okay." <laughs> and he's just great, and every everybody loves Raymond. I, yeah. I love that show as well. But uh, yeah, he's a very, very interesting actor, and and I was just surprised. I'm a huge Beatles fan, so you know, any kind of connection to, especially John Lennon, I found pretty interesting. But anyway, and Luke, I wanted to ask you something. I, I was listening to some of your stuff and uh, I listened to Snoopy the dog. Mm -hmm. I thought that's a pretty cool idea. Last time we chatted, I mentioned your mashup of Grease and Star Wars. I thought was was really clever. Uh, and I, you. I read in your bio that you were thinking for a while of a kind of Sno Peanuts um, kind of musical. Um, and, uh, I think that's what I read that you had, uh, that you had thought about some kind of bigger, um, kind of multiple song sort of approach to kind of the Peanuts characters. Anyway, I thought that's what I read when I was looking at the Snoopy, the dog stuff. I'm not quite sure what you're referring to. Um, uh. I mean, but I know I, that I know that there are peanuts musicals out there, but right. but well, like, am I? Do you, you are Snoopy the dog. Am I got the yeah, right? Song? Yeah, that, yeah, that's yeah. that's me. I'm just trying to think of uh, what I could have been, what project or idea I could have been thinking about. Uh, I thought it read in your biography that you had like come up with this idea, and then like 15 years later, you you you. Oh well, no, yeah, well, yeah, the, the, that that whole thing was just the fact that when Snoop Dogg first came out, which like the, like when he first broke big in like I think '93. With, I mean, he was on Dre's album first, and then he had his own album, you know, uh, Doggy Style. And then that song, you know, Who Am I, What's My Name, became his big hit. You know, to my, it's like I was sitting here going, oh, well, the very, uh, the very obvious thing that Weird Al or somebody else, Chris Rock, somebody's going to do is do a parody of this song, but make it having to tie in with Snoopy. Because here's this big, fearsome gangster rapper who has named himself Snoop. You know, and you know, at, you know, one of the most lovable, you know, cartoon dogs ever in you know the history of of media. So somebody's going to do this parody. So I better not do the parody myself because somebody else is going to do it. And by the time I get it done, like I, once upon a time, I once did a song, a parody of the President of the United States song, uh, uh, <laughs> uh, parody of their song Lump about Forrest Gump. So I had my own version of that. I got to perform it once, and then like three days later, Al appeared on the Dr. Demento show and played his song, his version of it. <laughs> so I would, I just didn't want to be in that position again where it's like anything that seems too obvious, I'm not going to do because somebody else is going to do it. And then it turned out, oh, nobody did it. Nobody did this. Nobody did a parody of the Snoop Dogg song about Snoopy. So fine, here it is, you know, 2011. I'm going to finally getting around, get around and make this song a reality. And I'm very glad I did. Dr. Demento has said that it is, like, it is his favorite of my tracks. Like, he thinks that as far as, like, the kind of, like, my style of doing song parodies, like, how I deconstruct things and reconstruct them, he thinks that's, like, the best example of, of you know, that in my work. So, so I'm very, you know, happy that he, you know, that he loved it so much. It was the number one song of the year on Dr. D, and it also won the Logan Award for Outstanding Parody Song. So, uh... Yeah, I, so, yeah, very very cool, and I like the referencing of like the Vince Guaraldi stuff in there, and um, and it brought me back to that old Coasters tune. You 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 made a reference to the yeah yeah. Why is everybody always picking on me? And I hadn't heard that song in so long, so I went back and listened to it, and I always thought of it as just a kind of a kitschy kind of novelty tune. It's actually a really really good song. Um, well, it's. I always when I was a kid, I like that song just confused the hell out of me because it's like, why are they singing about Charlie Brown and the characterization of Charlie Brown doesn't sound anything like the Charlie Brown I'm familiar with. Like it totally didn't make any sense. But they just, I don't know. It, it'd be. 
It's like if I made a song called Tony Stark about a guy who acted nothing like Tony Stark. You know, it's like why you could you do a parody of of Charlie Brown called Tony Stark. It, that fits. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah, but I it, it was obviously worth you know making the reference because I you know when I make songs like that, I'm trying to like work in as many you know reference points to you know the the subject matter into one thing. Um, you know, you know, hence me putting the uh, the. The Royal Guardsman uh, uh, Red Baron song in the one uh, bridge there because that absolutely had to be included. <laughs> uh, anyway, I wanted to t- just mention that I listened to it and I thought it was it was really good. So oh, cool. uh, thank you so uh, much. I, I appreciate the the compliments. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But anyway, that's all that's going on with me. Like I say, I'm uh, I'm I'm relaxed and in, in, in enjoying my retirement years. Uh, by the way. Um, Retirement's everything it's cracked up to be. So, you know, <laughs> look forward to it. when you guys get to be my age, it is it is great. You know, so uh um that's been my life here on in Washington State. Yeah, I'm never gonna be able to retire. I'm pretty confident about that. My my retirement plan is I'm going to move into my son's basement because he's gonna have make his first million by the time he's twenty five. I'm pretty sure about that. And nice. so wherever he ends up, I'm just going to move into his basement. He may not know I'm there, but that's okay. You know, I'll just, you know, so. Well, it's good to have a plan. Yeah. That sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> so you posted a song. Give us a quick intro to the song and we will give it a listen. I did. This is a song dedicated to my wonderful wife, Deb, of 36 years. We just had our 36th anniversary. We've been together two years prior to that, so we're, we're closing in on 40 here. Uh, and uh, um, I, uh, I wrote a little kind of a set of changes. I always get to the lyrics later, and I was trying to think of what the song might be about. And then I'm, I'm taking a walk, and it comes to me, um, how much more of me can she possibly take? And then it sort of wrote itself. And it's really pretty much based on on facts. I'm I'm pretty bad about about most things. I mean, I'm a, I'm an okay human being, but uh, I don't do good about remembering holidays and all those kinds of things. <laughs> uh, and he is very, very, very long suffering. Very sweet about the whole thing. I I've joked that uh, um, you know I've been kind of keeping the bar low for nearly forty years now, and she's. She's okay with it so far. She hasn't called a lawyer up to now, for heaven's sake. So, All right. That's good. That's the origin of the song. It's based on a true story. All right. Maybe here it is. How much more of me can she possibly take by Burble's Belly? One, two, three, four. I talk for hours when she's trying to read. Buy her flowers, don't pull the weeds. But she's been by my side since 1988. How much more of me can she possibly take? Don't do the dishes, don't get her cards. No birthday wishes, no warm regards. But she's kept me around since we shared that wedding cake how much more of me can she possibly take she's understanding and sweet but she's only human after all and I'd be abandoned and out in the street if it weren't for her good nature and alcohol won't ask directions. I constantly speed. I ignore her objections, each one guaranteed. But she hasn't called a lawyer up to now for heaven's sake. How much more of me can she possibly take? of a saint 
Someday I'm afraid She'll have had quite enough And I wouldn't blame her One little bit If she took me to the ocean And pushed me off a bluff I'm narcissistic To a tragic degree Even this love song Is mostly about me I'm a bad habit she developed and hasn't been able to break how much more of me can she possibly take she's my wisest decision and i'm her biggest mistake how much more of me can she possibly take i love the hang in there deb right at the end <laughs> um yeah uh now did you catch the typo in the uh the scrolling words i did not yeah um at the beginning um uh don't butt her flowers ah B -U -B -U -Y. Yeah. I, I, I looked at it five or six times before i finally um uh, uh finished it up and, and had it uh had the movie make itself ah, what are you gonna do yeah and one other little tiny little thing is the song, actually, I changed one line. I, to, she'll take me to the ocean and push me off a bluff. The original line was take me out to Ebe's and push me off the bluff. Ebe's is a, uh, a bluff here on Whidbey Island. So I had this Whidbey Island reference. I thought, ah, maybe make it a little, little vaguer. But uh, um, anyway, so there's the inside story. <laughs> I, I don't know that, I mean... Obviously, people on on the island would get the reference, but I don't think anyone else would. So it was probably right. a good good you know decision to change that. Yeah, I I, I have a, a quite a few songs that make reference to a lot of things on the island here, and uh, and they're great when I'm playing a, a show around here. But uh, yeah, can't you know I have to explain everything to everybody? But well, when you perform anyway. this song around there, you can go back to that that lyric you know that would work that's exactly what i do yeah, yeah. but uh anyway so it's a it's a it's a tribute to my very long suffering wife of like i say 36 years really getting closer to 40 now 30 like i say 38 june was our anniversary 36 so we're we're probably right about at 38 years together so i've been very lucky nice um what does she think yeah. of the song uh, it made her laugh when I played it for her. That's so good. She, uh, she thinks it's funny. Um, I, I played it for a couple of people who thought I'm a, I'm just a monster. They said this is, is if this is stuff is really true. You're really a horrible husband. I thought, well, <laughs> I mean, maybe I'm exaggerating a little around the edges, but uh, you know, um, I guess uh, yeah. There's more than a, a kernel of truth, grain of truth to all of it. Usually, um, there is, you know. <laughs> I hey listen uh, at least I'm, I'm I own my my shortcomings you know so uh, but anyway I think she thought it was pretty fun so my wife and I used to joke that our wedding song was going to be good enough for now by Weird Al Yankovic <laughs> we did play that at the wedding I we had I had a playlist of funny songs and that was on it so it was played at some point <laughs> oh nice 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 yeah um we had our our wedding song was blue room on ella fitzgerald's song i don't remember who wrote it um but anyway that was uh that was our wedding song um and uh yeah so it was a fun kind of uh a fun a fun kind of tribute to to deb and uh and just a funny to trying to make it a funny song mm. ironic but anyway well so it works very well well, thank you very much. Yeah, it's uh, um, it's just a lot of fun. Like I say, I'm, re I'm a retired school teacher, having a lot of fun, and this is uh, it's just been great to, you know, to to write the songs and and get them out there. This has been a real pleasure to uh, to get to know you guys. Are you performing out a lot these days? Not much these days. I'm still. I think I mentioned maybe the last time we chatted that uh, the one thing about living on the island it's pretty rural and uh when i was when when deb and i lived in seattle and i was in a series of bands in seattle that didn't play any original stuff but i mean i ran a band for years in seattle um and man when i needed you know players 
you know, put an ad on Craigslist and I'd have 25 phone calls, really, you know, people ready to come and, and play. Um, and it's just a very, 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 it's, it's slow going here. I've, I've tried to find a handful of people, even just one or two who could do a little harmonizing and, uh, and it just hasn't happened yet. So I do some solo stuff. What I'd like to do is find a couple of people who maybe a bass player or another guitar player. I don't know, maybe just a couple singers who can uh, do some harmonies. You know what you need to do is bring back grunge. Like you're in the uh, right, you're, tar- you're right in the right part of the country. Just form a new grunge band, like rockers in their fifties doing, bringing back grunge. That's what we got to do. <laughs> hey, I, I remember when grunge, you know, I was never a grunge guy and I, I love grunge. I'm a big Nirvana fan. And um, I had friends in bands that, um, that played in the, the late eighties, early nineties. And I'm not sure anybody I know ever played with any of the really huge, like Allison Chains or, or you know, or uh, or Nirvana, or any yeah. of the really big the bands that got really huge. <clears throat> but I I went to see my friends play, and you know when grunge was at its very kind of apex in like ninety one, ninety two, uh, around Seattle, and it was it was an interesting scene. It really was. Um, uh, so maybe yeah, maybe I'll bring maybe I'll bring grunge back. Do it. <laughs> There's a lot of Seattle's a great music town. It's got a lot of really good jazz. It's got a, a lot of, I mean, it's just a, a lot of really, really great venues. Um, and that part of the, that, I miss Seattle for that reason. Seattle's a big bustling city now, and we like our slower life out in the country. But, uh, but it is, I do miss that about uh, living in the city, man, having access to all the stuff. And where you, you are, um, Tom, you're, um, I mean, an hour outside of New York City. I yeah. mean, it's just, there's, I mean, tons I, I can imagine i mean just any band you want to see they're coming your way any any you know any any musicians pretty you wanna... much yeah um but i but i mean i'd have to go into new york for you know most of the shows because not much happens in new jersey if you're not in a cover band and i don't, don't care yeah. about cover bands so <laughs> well and now we're outside of new york's probably be a pretty exciting place to be i think it's uh like I say, we're about two hours from Seattle now, so getting into the city is a little bit, you know, mm. time consuming. That's a bit but, farther, uh, yeah. It, it, it's like an hour is like just enough that I can do it, you know. Like if I like, I had to go into the city for an audition. I I was just in Brooklyn um, a couple of weeks ago for filming something, so it's like you know I could do it just out and back, and it's it's not a big deal. Two hours, it's like now we're talking about going to Connecticut to visit my parents. That's a two hour drive. That's you know, it's far enough that it's like an excursion, you know, it's not, it's not just an out and back thing. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Two hours makes it tough to do that, like just in and out day trip sort of thing. And yeah. If you want to go see some music or something, uh, you know, you wrap things up, it's late, get in the car and you can power through your one hour drive home, but two hours, yeah, um, that can get kind of tough. So um, but we've been to New York tons of times. My wife and I love the city. We haven't been for a while, but my, my dad was born in, in New York City, and I had relatives there until I was in my 20s. Um, I think the last couple of relatives um, passed away when I was in my 20s, but we used to go into the city um, two, three times a year, see shows. First Broadway show I ever saw, Beatlemania. Hmm, cool. Yeah, uh, it was back in the 70s. Um, but... Uh, uh i don't know i hear different things about new york now i'm not sure whether it's uh you know still as quite as inviting as it used to be we used to just love it but it's been 10 years since i've been there oh yeah it's 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 still it's still new york city but yeah. I've, I've never been to seattle i've always wanted to go um i know sir mix a lot is from seattle he's always been one of my favorite artists Sir Mix Lots actually from he's from outside of seattle a little town called auburn and i happen to know this because i taught for the auburn school district oh okay years and years. And Sir Mix a lot um, uh, lived in in not too far from the school I taught at, and uh, he was his big babies got back was 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 huge, right? Yeah, what he was teaching there, and and uh, so he was a huge deal um, <laughs> back in the day. Back, I guess that would have been the '90s, the early '90s. Yeah, that was early '90s. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's I mean it's a cool city. It really is. It's but it's it's just a when I moved there in '86, it was you know kind of a Kind of a, a mid-sized city, kind of laid back, sort of still kind of working class, and now it's just like 
all tech and super expensive um, and uh, kind of overground around the edges, I think. Yeah, I mean, you um, know, who is it? Is it Microsoft that's head headquarters in Seattle? Yeah, Microsoft has headquarters at Amazon. Amazon, Amazon too, yeah. Headquarters in Seattle. Uh, I don't. I, they were going to move to New York. I don't know what happened there. They, Amazon has a huge campus in Seattle. Microsoft is on the east side. They're technically in, in Redmond. But, I mean, they've got, you know, everywhere there are, you know, buildings and whole blocks of buildings. Google's, Google's got a huge presence in a neighborhood um, kind of north of downtown uh, called Fremont and uh, anyway it's a I mean it's just a huge tech center now yeah. and I mean that again that drives rents up and everything yeah. it's it's crazy how expensive things are in Seattle but it's a cool city there's a lot going on so uh, and I do miss having access to all these really great players who were always available when I needed you know <laughs> to be, I must have had 25 30 people shuffle in and out of the band I ran for 15 20 years um, and, uh, boy, you know, we, I'd get a call on a Tuesday that the, the Friday, you know, that some guy couldn't do the Friday show and I'd never have any problem finding somebody who could step in, you know? So, um, anyway, so I missed so, that. So they step but, in, do they, like, how, how hard is it to learn the song? Like, you don't think they got a couple of days or is this a cover um, band? A lot where... of this stuff, this was cover stuff. Okay. A lot of it was jazz and mostly everybody you know kind of knows the same set of tunes and the only question is if you if you're playing with a singer what key are you playing it in and that's not too you know tough to uh, kind of adjust and uh, and mostly it worked out well not always sometimes <laughs> it didn't work out quite well. yeah because I, I was you know somebody stepping in and here's I, I was watching the psycho stick live stream before we started here and they recently lost their bass player, so they got a new bass player. And I, it always, I'm always like, so they have a new bass player. They have like five albums out. He has to learn all the songs because they perform them all. You know, it's not like there's, you know, a small subset of the songs they perform. They're on these streams. They perform everything eventually. And I'm like, this dude yeah. has to learn all of the songs, you know. But he must be good because he was he was rocking out with them like he had always been there, so... Uh, yeah, and, and good players. I mean, they can just do that. I mean, uh, they can just, um, yeah, step right in and, and not miss a beat. Um, uh, sometimes, again, it, it, every now and again, it didn't work out. My old philosophy when I was bringing people in like this was just do no harm. I mean, just <laughs> if, if, if you're not sure what's going on, lay out. Wait till you're feeling it, you know, and sometimes... Um, that wasn't the case. Sometimes people were like, lay, you know, right in there, even though they didn't really know what was happening. But anyway, um, that's one of the frustrations of living in the country, you know, um, not not a really big group of players to, you know, kind of um, draw from. And uh, but I'm, I'm still doing some solo shows and stuff. So cool. um, and that's fun. Um, but mostly I'm just having fun writing the songs and recording them and and sharing them with my friends and, uh, you know. Um, that's mostly it right now. Awesome. So do you have anything you'd like to plug? Uh, just my, my YouTube page. That's about it right now. That's Burble's Belly on YouTube. So I've got, uh, um, a few new songs up there. Uh, like I was mentioning, I got a Halloween song up there now that uh, I'll get right to you in case maybe you can slip it in all based on a true story about the ghost that haunts my house. Um, very friendly ghost. We think we know who it is. Um, it's a pretty interest. If you're interested, it's a pretty interesting story. Um, I've never well, been really a believer, so to speak. Yeah. But, when uh, when you when we talk about the song, I don't want to talk at all about all of it now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but anyway, um, yeah. So Burble's Belly. I'm the only Burble's Belly on YouTube. So feel you're free. You're probably the only Burble's Belly on the planet. I would I <laughs> put money on that. <laughs> I, well, that would be fine with me. It's uh, yeah, I'm I'm happy to be the the only one out there. I've never heard anybody burble when I named my cat Burble. I thought it's just you know like a a really great name, but nobody but me seems to think so. So <laughs> I guess anyway. I like the name. I, is is it a real name or is it just something you made up? It's just something I named up. I made up. I, okay. I, it sounded like a real name to me. He the cat looked like a burble to me, so I thought okay, burble. Um, well, it's anyway. a real name now, so that that's all that matters. 
Yeah, yeah. So, Burble's Belly on YouTube. All right. So, are you going to stick around for the rest of the show, or are you taking off? Uh, sure. I'd, I'd, I'd love to stick around and okay. uh, um, do Paul's song, and uh, I'd love to listen to that again. All right. Let's do some news. This is the Fump. Sneeze on you. always brought me joy but now i play with them just like a doggy play toy i made it with the bagel and cream cheese because i was feeling hot belly i kiss your nose but every freaking night you freaking bite my freaking toes that's the funny music project at thefump.com t-h-e-f-u-m-p.com Attention fans of funny music, Fump Fest is back. Returning to Con on the Cob, this year's event will feature performances by 2D6, Carla Albrecht, Holy Bongwater, Pastor Haster, Ross Childs, and Steve Goody. Plus, dumb parody ideas and the 14th annual Logan White her speak. award. Hey, 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 who are you? And how did you get into my studio? Silence! I am Dr. Milo T. Pinkerton III, founder of the Consortium of Genius, that organization of evil scientists best known as the COG. COG! <laughs> and we are taking over Fump Fest. Why, nobody cares about those other fools. They shall come to see me! Us! Well. Us! But once our takeover is complete, we shall move on to phase two which is taking over most of Northern Ohio <laughs> and then spreading out to the rest of Ohio, then the world, and finally, the entire universe. <laughs> Britain, don't you think you should read the rest of this copy? Of course. Yes, let's see. <clears throat> now, where did he leave off? Oh, here we go. The 14th annual Logan Whitehurst Memorial Award for Excellence in Comedy Music. Dumb parody ideas, and, uh... You already said that, bro! Mm. All right, but it's on here twice for some reason. Oh, that must be a misprint. Uh, oh, clearly, no. it's really, let's clearly see. Oh, no. Live podcasts. Movie time, the game show, and this year, play Bump Bingo for a chance to win a bag of authentic Pinkertonium molecules. Oh, yes, of course. What? They're giving away my precious Pinkertonium? Sure How dare they? This will not stand. Why, just for that, we're going to have a live edition of Escape from the Secret Lab at Fumpfest, where we shall capture the organizers of Fumpfest and just let them try to escape. Let them plead for their little lives or perform some of their so-called songs. <laughs> Whatever. Why, I'm sure that when all's said and done, I shall crush them like a nut. <laughs> well, they are from Ohio. Okay, so, uh, well, he didn't finish here, so let's see. Uh, Fun Fist is taking place October 3rd through 6th as part of Con on the Cob in Hudson, Ohio. So visit Fun Fist for more information. That's F-U-M-P Fest. Dot com. You, know, you might want the www's on there. And you know, we'll see you there. So, okay, bye-bye. We'll see you in Ohio. And don't forget to bow to the cog. Cog! Time for funny music news. Something, something, something. In the news, Weird Al Yankovic has announced his Bigger and Weirder Tour for 2025. This tour promises to big back, bring back the legendary full production multimedia comedy rock show with his hits and some of his never performed live before music. The opening act is Puddle's Pity Party, and I thought I read somewhere something about like four guest musicians in addition to the regular band, but I couldn't find the yeah, article again. I, I remember, I remember that being said somewhere. Do you remember who it was, or did they announce who it was, or anything? Or 
I'm pretty sure it came from some official source. Uh, <laughs> no, I mean, like, do you know who the musicians are or anything? Oh, I'm, I don't know. Oh, okay. So, yeah, four guest musicians. So it's going to be a bigger show, that, hence the name. Tour dates are available at weirdal.com with links to the tickets for your local area. Keep in mind, several of the shows are already sold out. So, All right, the yeah, thump uh, volume... Go ahead, what? I was just going to say, yeah, uh, uh, Tony's friend uh, Doggins bought a bunch of tickets for us, so we're going to see the uh, the Englewood uh, Kia Forum show on August 30th. Cool. So, I'm, yeah. I'm, I was... Planning to buy tickets today for the show in uh, at Foxwoods Casino in Connecticut um, for next July, but I wanted to wait till my wife got home to see if she wanted to come, and then we talked about it, and then I forgot to go back and buy the ticket. So I'm going to do that later tonight. Um, but uh, the Fump Volume 106 is now available, featuring all the songs posted during July and August of 2024, including Whippets by Dead by 28, I Made It With a Bagel and Cream Cheese by Sulu, Snoopy vs. Cthulhu by Tom Smith, and many, many more, plus a video of Via Bella performing live at NASFIC from this past July. Uh, the CD shipped out to subscribers the other day. You, if you are not a subscriber, you can order yours now at the in the store at thefump.com. The Arrogant Worms Indiegogo campaign wrapped up last week. Their goal was $14,459. Their final tally, $16,980. So they did make their goal with a, with a little bit extra money to promote their new album, Canadian Famous. So keep an eye out for that. And the Fump newsletter went out the other day with stories about Fump Fest, the Logan Awards, our music videos, and more. If you're not on our mailing list, you can view it at tiny.cc slash fump0924 for September of 2024. tiny.cc slash fump0924. All right. Fump Fest is happening a week from today. Um, I still have <laughs> stuff to do. But uh, we we be, we'll be ready. We'll be going. Going to happen. You just heard the promo, so you know all about it. The Consortium of Genius, a whole bunch of performers, yada yada yada. One thing I wanted to talk about here is the video contest is happening. So what happened was, I believe I mentioned this on this podcast at least, is that after this year we're going to take some time off. So because there, we don't have any plans for a next year event, I didn't want to give out, you know, a prize to an event that may not happen. So I was like, all right, we just won't do the video contest this year. And I put on my to-do list to send out an email, update the website, make a formal announcement, yada, 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 share it all over social media. And apparently I never did that. And then we started getting entries. <laughs> so... <laughs> So we were like, okay, well, let's come up with an alternate prize. So we've decided the grand prize is going to be a complete set of Fump albums, either digitally or on CD, whichever the winner prefers. Um, and the other second prize and third prize are going to stay the same. The deadline is still October 1st. So if you have plans for a video, there is still time to get it in. We do have three entries already. So um, we are planning to screen them during opening ceremonies. There's the possibility that the sound system may not be hooked up at opening ceremonies by then. So if that's the case, we will screen them during movie time, which happens on Friday. So we're just going to play it by ear. It'll be fine. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah. Yes. Um, I mean, hey, you're you're already making the uh, the the um the program books, so that's yeah. already getting done. Yep. So you're doing you're doing fine. I'm I'm doing fine. I'm fine. Everything's fine. Everything's under control. It's fine. I'm I'm literally making post-it notes to sing them up here of the things that I uh, either have to or should get done before I go to Fump Fest, just to make sure I haven't forgotten anything. Uh, yeah. All right. I just finished up an important video that will be played during the Logan Awards just before we started the show, and I sent that off to you and Ian. So yep. I haven't watched it yet, that. but I did see the email come in. Cool. All right. Uh, uh, Logan Awards, Escape from the Secret Lab, Dumb Parody Ideas, and more. Um, blah, blah, blah. Okay. 
yeah, I, I think that's it for Fump Fest. Either of you have anything before tour dates? I can't think of anything. All right. Tour dates. On Sundays online, two sleeps. Mondays online, Steve Goody and Brad Tassel at virtualcomedyshow.com. Mondays and Tuesdays online, Bill Larkin. As I mentioned, Psycho Stick was streaming earlier this evening. I don't know if they're going to go back to streaming every week or not, but they were streaming earlier this evening. On the 27th in Cleveland, Ohio, Chris Mezzalesta. The 27th through 29th in San Jose, California, the Chris Waffle Explosion. On the 1st in Nashville, Tennessee, Steve Goody. The 3rd through the 6th in Richfield, Ohio, Fump Fest. On the 4th in Livermore, California, Phil Johnson and Roadside Attraction. And on the 8th in Nashville, Tennessee, the Consortium of Genius, Nuclear Bubble Wrap, and Remy's Playhouse Burlesque. Ooh. I want to go to Tennessee. <laughs> <laughs> But I can't. I didn't realize they were all involved with Remy's Playhouse Burlesque. I wish you know, I could be there too. Apparently, they are. Remy used to, for those who don't know, Remy used to be a member of the secret of uh, the Consortium of Genius. She was she was the lab girl for a while, I believe. Yes, and then and then after she was lost that position, she was part of the Jobless Elite. Yes. Uh-huh. <laughs> God damn it! I don't. Uh, yes, I do. I thought I didn't have it in this scene, but I do. Okay. Yes, but since she has become uh, like an independent uh, burlesque performer and also burlesque show producer doing amazing shows all across uh, the, the, the Mid-South uh, and, and stuff like that. Yeah, so, she's been uh, like producing a whole bunch of shows down there. And like apparently they're doing really well, so I'm, I'm very happy for her. She also has a lot of fun social media, like like a TikTok account and other stuff like that, like Instagram, so... Follow her. She's Remy D. Um, oh, crap. I think it's five oh four. I think it's Remy D five oh four. I can find so, out. Anyway, and I'm not gonna. Yeah, Remy it. Remy D five oh four. That's her okay. handle on on uh, on Instagram, and I'm assuming it's the same thing on uh, TikTok and other places. So. She's awesome. She's funny. She's hilarious. Uh, 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 yeah. So go follow her. Dang it. Yep. All right. Uh, tour dates. I did the tour dates. Um, birthdays. That's where we left off. Um, and I don't think there's anything. I forgot to. I forgot to remove Danita from last week. So let me just make sure I didn't. Yeah, that's right. We will get him next week. And so no birthdays this week. All right. Second. Uh, my wife's birthday. October third. Oh, happy birthday! My son's Hooray. birthday is October second. I'm going to be driving to Ohio on my son's birthday. Not a couple of Libras. He's turning seventeen. He'll deal. <laughs> <laughs> when I when he was seven, I couldn't miss his birthday. Now that he's seventeen, he doesn't care. So, all right. Uh, second song of the week, the new one by Paul Wensley. Here is Notification Sounds. As I walk through the Costco, the rows and rows of stuff consolidate my chores. The raunch of a sexy night before is a but my thoughts are broken by a ding and irritation from a stranger next to me. His phone a telling him he's got a text from Fred. Oh. Yes, he loves that stuff Could be another sexy night ahead Oh yeah But my thoughts, my thoughts are broke again But that dinging thing that guy 
guys. Notification, hey man. I'm trying to think about love, and that's a messing me up. Hey. Now I want to contact him and see if I can get an acapella version of this song so I can get those sounds he made at the end of the song, like bleh, bleh, like that, and use that as my notification sound. So every time I get a text, you hear him go, bleh, or something. I'd love to chat with him about his inspiration musically because I'm listening to that thinking, this guy really digs The Cure. It sounded a little bit like Duran Duran to me at times. Um, and I wonder, was that, that wasn't a drum machine. That was an actual set of drums that somebody was playing, I think. I couldn't tell you. Yeah. But maybe. I'd like to know. Anyway, I thought, I thought it was a great song. Yeah, I love this song. It was, it was really cool. And it reminded me of when I was at the beach over the weekend, my mother was there and her phone was going off. And the, the text, every time she got a text, there was like a 30 second music clip that played and she was not there. She was like upstairs. So... <laughs> So and I, I don't know what the song was, but I was like, really? Like that doesn't get annoying really fast. <laughs> I have my my phone is on silent like at all times. You know? The only reason I know I get a text or anything is because my watch vibrates and then I look at the watch and it tells me who you know who texted like Ian just texted me, so I was able to respond. But. Yeah, I, I still use a fax machine. I'm kidding, I don't. I <laughs> I do have it. But anyway, yeah, I, I've got... Uh, I can There's relax. a technology that needs to die. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they finally killed off telegrams. I think the last telegram was sent in 2013, I believe. Is that right? I didn't know yeah. that. I, I think the last telegram was, the, was like in India in 2013. I don't remember what it said. Somebody knows what yeah. it said, but... But yeah, so... If, like, okay. I wonder what the last fax said, is going to be. You know what I would... No, it's the, the last telegram said we've been trying to contact you about your car's extended <laughs> probably, warranty. That's probably what the last fax is going to say, too. <laughs> All right, let's do some feedback. Making the internet absolutely ridiculous. Dementia Radio. www.dementiaradio.org. Port 8027. Please hang up and try again. This is the part where there's feedback. 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 You know that segment of the show we do about now? Feedback. Feedback. <laughs> feedback. <laughs> feedback. 
Sunday Funnies wrote, Sunday Funnies is Wacky Ben show, so... Wacky Ben. <laughs> Fumfest actually begins on my birthday. It would have been an honor to meet the COG if I were to make it. I do miss the Chicago Fumfest since it was closer, and I hope everyone has a good time. And... For who could ever learn to love a beast? Father Beast wrote, <laughs> like, hear Luke doing it a half a second later. Um, Father Beast wrote, Devo on programming the website he was talking about. This website has a cookie. It's made of code. It's useless. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. <laughs> and Father Beast also wrote, I have been listening to Luke's continuing updates on his new song, and my anticipation is reaching new heights. Do I dare hope for that 10-minute epic history of Squirrel Girl with many verses or multiverses? Hey, see what I did there? Luke answers in his Gilbert voice, no. <laughs> that is the correct response. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, nothing against Squirrel Girl. I mean, obviously, I'm a fan of hers, but I just, I don't know. Um, uh there, there. Let's just say that there's uh, other things in in pop culture that were kind of, uh, that kind of have been taking precedent, and I'm like, okay, I have to do this uh, while I while it still is uh, relevant enough to matter, etc. Mm. So that was the thing that kicked me in the butt to finally make this thing happen after three and a half years of me putting it off. Yeah. So yeah. All right, and over and on Devo's you- in it too, and Devo's in it too. Yes. And now I'm in this, too. Uh, over on YouTube. A-Log! Oh, my God, it's you, not again! A-Log wrote, When it comes to Luke's cover idea, I'm surprised you guys didn't mention fair use when it comes to Cookie Monster being on the cover. And as for Tag Team and their various versions of Whoop, There It Is, I'm not sure who had more versions of their only hit to milk it for what it was worth, Tag Team or Los Del Rio, when they made a Christmas version of the Macarena. Yeah, lots of Macarena versions, too. Um, As for fair use, fair use is a legal defense you use in court. Um, It it doesn't give you a a free pass to to use people's, you know, copyrighted material. Um, And just drawing Cookie Monster on the cover of the Fump CD, I don't think that would count as fair use. I don't know how we could defend that, because it's not commenting on it. Um like if we know. were to draw if i were to try to attempt to draw a cross between steve goody and cookie monsters so that it was a different looking thing yes you could do that not, as long you know, as it's a different character so, yeah, yeah as long as it's legally distinct from the original yeah you know yeah so as long as we can tell them no this isn't cookie monster this is the steve goody monster you know a goody monster it's not a like cookie for, monster it's like, a goody monster for example, when when we did the when my song "Small Round Yoda" was out and I did the cover of that one, I drew Jabba the Hutt and made him look like he was like Donald Trump and that he was like surrounded by COVID, you know, germs. Yeah. But, but then I but then I drew uh, uh, Mando and Grogu like basically just the way they normally look, and and because of that, uh, uh, I you know Songcast or whatever you know had a problem with that cover, so so Devo had to kind of mock up a alternate cover for the the digital platforming stuff yeah it's not so much songcast it's spotify and and oh, the, spotify. the streaming yeah. services i mean they they go through songcast but you know it's it's all those places um all right Christerix wrote while i haven't seen any videos of cookie monster singing death metal i have seen several that sync him up with tom Waits songs the one I really enjoy is God's Away on Business. They sync the video clips well with the music, and the Tom Waits voice in this one does sound a lot like Cookies. And then there's a link to the video. Thank you. I will take a look at that. And Tease Chillin' wrote, Not Cookie Monster could be mostly obscured by other referential elements, maybe. Y'all will figure it out. Yeah, we'll figure we'll figure out something. All right. And that's it for feedback. So... Teasing. He's a teasing kind of guy. Now you have a job. Yeah. Teasing. Uh, tomorrow's song is by Joe J. Thomas. And. Woo. Tuesday's song is not yet posted. 
All right, we'll we'll have to see what happens on Tuesday. I did email the artist. I'm like, hey, are you gonna post this? And we'll see what happens. Um, all right. We never did plug Paul's website. Well, I think it's is. I mean, let's see, is it paulwensley.com? Oh, I don't know because he never updated his his thump profile. Paul, let's see. All right, there's no paulwensley.com. He's got an IMDb page. Um, nope. All right. Yeah, he's on. He's on Facebook. Okay, Paul Wensley fifty four on Facebook. All right, uh, Eric, plug yourself one more time. At Burble's Belly on YouTube and. Uh... That's about it. Thanks for letting me stick around, guys. It's always a pleasure. Good luck with Thump Fest. Thank, Thank you, you very so much. much. I'm going to need it. <laughs> Have a great time in Northern Ohio. All right. Let's get out of here. Thank you for listening to the Funny Music Podcast. I'm Devo Spice. I'm Luke Ski. And look, there's Eric, a.k.a. Burble's Belly. Thanks, everybody. Thank you for listening to the Funny Music Podcast. You can listen live every Thursday night at 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 Pacific at DementiaRadio.org and join us in the chat or subscribe to the podcast feed. Look us up on iTunes and be sure to leave us a review. Feedback for the show can be sent to info at thefunk.com. The Funny Music Podcast is a production of Fidem Interactive, LLC, released under a Creative Commons share-alike license. Tell your friends. Tell your enemies. Shout it to random people on the street. And be sure to visit thefump.com for the latest funny songs. Tune in next week where you'll hear Luke Ski say, I still haven't made up my mind yet about Toledo.